One, two, three, pull up testing, chin up. Stop doing unilateral exercises as a primary thing in your training. If you want to be strong, then please stop doing that. So back off from all the one arm push up variations and the one arm uh, overhead press variations and the one arm back levers and the one arm dips and the training for one arm muscle ups and even the assisted one arm chin ups. If you're not yet strong, then stop doing those things right the fuck now. Well, that was quite a controversial intro, but if you're not yet strong, meaning you can't do a pull up or a chin up with 40 or 50 kgs to save your freaking life, or you cannot press 60 kgs above your head for a couple of reps to save your life, if that's the case, then yes, you really do need to stop focusing on unilateral exercises and focus on quality exercises that will get your strength up which me and Johnny are gonna demonstrate right now. So before we get into that, I just wanna say that if you are interested in, uh, in the Sky Mentorship, so working one-on-one -on -one with me, then we have some, some different options. There's so many people uh, writing in and everybody, so me and my team are working constantly on it, and we're gonna accept actually some more students on the, on the Sky Mentorship, so that's pretty fucking amazing. So only for the serious and very committed who want to make training their life or want to become a coach in the future, then make sure to click the, click the very first link right here below the video and schedule a call with a, a member on my team and uh, you have a free strategy call and then we'll see if you and me can work together. All right, so now let's get into the theme of today's video. So why unilateral exercises are not worth it. So basically in the start, when we want to get you strong, we want to pick an exercise that involves the greatest amount of your muscle mass. And we want to get better at that exercise and lift more weight. Because if you want to get strong, strong meaning pull the most amount of weight in a specific way. So if we want to, so then we basically want to choose a specific movement pattern that's worth improving at, such as the squat, most definitely one of the most natural patterns there is. You want to get stronger there, pull up, with a neutral grip, with a supinated grip or a pronated grip. So we need to get good at that and we need to get good at overhead pressing. So whether we're doing some pike push-ups or some military press, that's absolutely phenomenal. So those, of con those are the main exercises that involve the greatest amount of muscle mass. Therefore, you can make a lot of improvements very quickly and the adaptation of becoming stronger, of developing bigger muscles and stronger joints and thicker bones as well, that is the adaptation that we get from lifting more weight. So a lot of people tend to get uh, a bit too excited. They can do five sets of five push-ups properly with protraction, and then they're like, yeah, I'm gonna go further on like Rocky with a one-arm push-up. You know, I did it as well. I could do like, a, literally I did 100 one-arm push-ups once with a, in a straddle position, just like, just like Rocky. But I could do that because I was very fucking strong because I could military press 70 kgs overhead. So any athlete you see out there that you appreciate, that you find interesting, that you find strong, he can pull a one on chin up, he can do, do a planche or something like that. I guarantee you, guarantee you, if that person tries a weighted chin up or tries an overhead press, he's fucking strong. He's much stronger than you. So whether he achieved that strength one way or another, that's his thing. He might be very gifted. He might uh, work his way with pike push-ups or something like that, but he got very strong. So if you want to get strong, then make sure from the push-up, we have some progressions that is me and Johnny are gonna show you that you need to focus on for pulling and for pressing to develop strength and become a badass motherfucker. All right, so considering right now you're not yet strong, but you can do five sets of five push-ups. So you wanna take your strength to the next level. You want to improve, you want in the future to do some handstand push-ups and stuff like that. So where do we take it from there? So we have some different options. So from the push-up, the easiest way to make it more difficult is to lean more forward. That way it's more difficult on the deltoids, especially some people like to do push-ups here. So there's actually a lot of tricep involvement because the, the forearm is not in the best position to press, so you should be here. So in that case, the next progression is leaning a bit more forward. That puts more pressure on the deltoids and on the bicep as well. It's an excellent progression to make it more difficult. And later on, you can even lean more and more forward up to the waist and do the pseudo planche push-ups. Uh, phenomenally working the serratus anterior in that protracted position, position working the bicep as well. So just a phenomenal progression to go for five by five reps. So once you can do that, then it's time for go, to go for some overhead pressing. So then the most sense would make the pike push-up. So pike push-up is absolutely phenomenal. 
uh, you lean forward, depress a lot of weight on the shoulders so you can explore the pike push-up, then later on go with an elevated deep pike push-ups, really focusing on the delts, and you can progress later on towards a more difficult progression, the handstand push-up, chest wall handstand push-up for now, a great way to place a lot of weight on the deltoids. Or you can also go further on from a pseudo planche push-up to a tuck planche push-up. Tuck planche push-up is a fucking phenomenal exercise. I don't know why more people aren't doing tuck planche push-up. It's the easiest way to put the most amount of weight on your freaking deltoids. And because the lean is not so great, if you stay in a tuck, it's a great way to like literally horizontally press your entire body weight. So I'm freaking 90 kg, so I gotta press 90 kgs there. That's a freaking difficult exercise. So tuck planche push-up going deep there, absolutely phenomenal for deltoid development. Also a variation, you can do body weight anywhere you want and it's much better than the freaking one arm push-up. And obviously you can also use the military press if you have the options of training with weights and if you're a, right now you're not yet very strong, so military press is just phenomenal because it's, you have the same amount of intensity all throughout the range of motion. Pike push-up is very difficult in the bottom, very easy on the top, while military press, if you're pressing uh, 40, 50 kgs above the head, there's a whole lot of stability work you got to do that. Your tailor cuff is working, you're, uh, you're uh, going into shoulder flexion, so you're developing better, uh, better stability there and strength, so it's just phenomenal for a handstand push-up development. So work your military press, Go towards the handstand push-up or explore the tuck planche push-up and later on advanced tuck planche push-up if you truly want to have strong pressing. That's the main thing you gotta focus on. All right, and then regarding the other side, we have pulling, which is for now quite simple. So let's say you can do about five sets of five chin-ups. That, that you can do, right? Maybe on the rings, maybe you prefer pull-ups more, stick with the pull-ups then for now. So pick a variation that you like and get better at it. Get, get insanely good at it. Improve your activation there and uh, become very good. So whether it's the chin up, choose the chin up and stick with it for the next, for next couple of months until you progress in weight. And then once you start to feel your golfer's elbow bothering you a little bit, then switch to pull-ups. So switch the grip a little bit from time to time to avoid any, uh, any injury on the elbow. And then try to progress basically with the weighted chin up. That's the easiest way. So you can still do some uh, assisted, later, uh, assisted one chin ups later on, but that's once you are already strong. So if you cannot pull a 40 kg weighted chin up, you're not yet strong. Don't work for the one arm chin up and go with all sorts of unilateral exercises there. Don't go with the assisted one arm chin up because you're gonna develop a different pattern of pulling from left to right hand. So on, in my case, my right hand really likes to pull here. My left hand likes to pull a little bit more in front. Right one likes to go a little bit more here. So in that case, once I practice the weight, the chin up, I can really look at my elbow position. I can really make sure to perform it symmetrically. So if you can pull a 60 kg weighted chin up symmetrically, you have good, fantastic scapular connection. So that's just phenomenal for your strength development. While if you can do three one arm chin ups on the right and one one arm chin up on the left, your scapular connection is not very good. When you're gonna try a weighted pull up, you're not gonna pull symmetrically because one hand is gonna take over. So weighted chin ups are a fantastic idea until you can pull 40 or 50 kgs for reps and then you can focus on the one arm progression. That is the one arm chin up, which is one of the most beneficial unilateral exercises, definitely worth getting. So in conclusion, why military press and the weighted chin up are better than the one arm push up, for example, or a assisted one arm chin up is because it forces you to perform the movement symmetrically. And when you're under a lot of weight, that's quite difficult to do. So it forces you to develop better scapula connection and the same pattern on left and right arm. So if you're not yet strong and you truly want to get stronger, the easiest way to do it is get your military press from 30 kgs to 50 kgs. You can, you can do this very easily. If you practice it about twice per week, five sets of five, or if you do it three times per week, you do three sets of, three sets of five. The same goes for the weighted chin up, for example. And if you do that and you slowly increase the weight with the coming weeks, take an active rest week from, from time to time, you're gonna get that weighted chin up from 20 kgs to 40, 50 kgs, and then you can focus on the one arm, one arm chin up variations and the front lever variations a little bit more, and you're gonna have faster and just amazing progress if you do so. So yeah, boom, that's it for this video. For everybody who wants to be an amazing athlete or an amazing coach for that matter, make sure to uh, click the, the first link right here below the video and schedule a strategy call with a member on my team and uh, you'll see if you and me can work together. And this is only for the serious because uh, this is definitely not for everyone and it takes so much of my time. I don't have time to 
to have 50 students and teach them individually across the week, even though that would be fantastic, but I just, I don't have that amount of time. So uh, for everybody who's very serious, I'm gonna make an exception and I'm gonna fit you somewhere in my schedule. So make sure if you're serious to click the link right here and uh, you'll see if you and I can work together. Thank you so much for paying attention and for looking at this video and make sure to work on that uh, weighted chin up, improve your weighted chin up, improve your weighted pull up, uh, improve your military press, or if you can't do any military press, make sure to work on those spike, spike push-ups, elevate your feet, then progress towards the chest to a handstand push-up or a tuck planche push-up. Bam, I'm good. Thank you for your attention and your time, and I'll see you in the next video. And always remember, you're a champion. Boom.